Hi, my name is Rachel. And in today's video, we're talking about the cybersecurity risks associated with the metaverse and Web 3.0 apps and services. Quite a bit, and much of it is uncharted territory. Here's everything you need to know about the metaverse and Web 3.0 along with the various cybersecurity risks associated with the supposed successor to the internet as we know it. So without any further delay, let's get started. Before we talk about the risks, let's give a brief introduction about Metaverse and Web 3.0. These words have been circulating everywhere online as of late, but where do they come from and what do they mean? Let's break it down. What is Metaverse? American novelist Neil Stephenson originally envisioned a virtual reality-based successor to the internet in his 1992 science fiction novel Snow Crash, coining the term. As Facebook rebranded to Meta following a range of damaging stories throughout 2021, they gave an explanation as to what they hoped to achieve with the metaverse. The metaverse will feel like a hybrid of today's online social experiences, sometimes expanded into three dimensions or projected into the physical world. It will let you share immersive experiences with other people even when you can't be together, and do things together you couldn't do in the physical world. It's the next evolution in a long line of social technologies, and it's ushering in a new chapter for our company. An example would be seeing a virtual concert in 3D or watching sports from a virtual seat in the stadium. Another possibility would be trying on clothes in a digital store or working from home. Web 3.0 works similarly, with the phrase being coined by Ethereum co-founder Gavin Wood in 2014. Built on decentralized platforms, Web 3.0 hopes to power the next wave of internet applications and services, forming the metaverse as we know it. They plan to do so using distributed ledger technology, the most common of which are blockchains. Along with the use of avatars, virtual reality, and augmented reality, Web 3.0 apps will be able to store data without it being centralized, which could solve problems we face with current systems in terms of online privacy. A popular example of an early Web 3.0 app would be Siri, Apple's voice-controlled AI assistant. It uses technologies like machine learning, natural language generation, and natural language processing to improve results over time. After giving a short introduction with examples about Metaverse and Web 3.0, Let's dive into the dark side of the both technologies. And what are the cybersecurity risks associated with the metaverse and Web 3.0 apps and services? Quite a bit, and much of it is uncharted territory. Beginning with a risk which is cybercrime. One of the more obvious drawbacks of a decentralized system is that criminals will take advantage of the setup. It happens with the current iteration of the internet and is more likely to happen if there's no regulation within the sector. There's not much protection within the cryptocurrency sphere, which is intrinsically tied to the metaverse. After all, if you lose your password or give it away mistakenly, the money is essentially gone forever. For example, over $2.2 million worth of NFT were stolen from the New York-based art collector and gallerist, Todd Kramer, in what was reported to have been a phishing scam in January 2022. Then there is another important risk called privacy. If the idea is to create a virtual avatar that can be used across a range of sites and services, it highlights issues relating to online privacy and the amount of data companies will be able to collect. This includes anything from medical data to smaller tidbits that may have been missed with current apps and services. In Meta's most recent earnings call, Zuckerberg confirmed that ads are going to continue being an important part of the strategy across the social media parts of what we do, and it will probably be a meaningful part of the metaverse, too. They're probably salivating at the prospect of scooping up user data at unprecedented levels, especially as Facebook's business model is based on using personal data to sell targeted advertising. Next risk is about lack of decentralization. Depending on your thoughts, the current iteration of the internet is more free than a system built using the global consensus found with a blockchain like Ethereum. Then there's the fact that large tech companies are leading the charge and have a vested interest in molding the metaverse to suit their objectives. Will you still have the same level of anonymity seen with Web 2.0? The another risk is mindfulness. We already spend too much time online, staring at screens all day. It's typical of the digital age in which almost everything is within reach or accessible with a few taps of a smartphone. 
As a concept, mindfulness focuses on the ability to live in the moment, focusing on senses and feelings to reduce stress. The idea of plugging into virtual reality obviously comes with a range of potential issues in terms of the mental health of users. The last risk goes to moderation. Will it be possible to moderate metaverse content, especially in a climate of rampant misinformation? According to Meta executive Andrew Bosworth, it's a user issue rather than down to the platforms to police. In an interview with Axios on HBO in December 2021, Bosworth said, individual humans are the ones who choose to believe or not believe a thing, they are the ones who choose to share or not share a thing. Personally, the likes of Zuckerberg pushing for a nebulous metaverse makes me want to stay as far away as possible. So that brings us to the end of today's video. If you have further questions feel free to comment down below. Now if you found the content useful, don't forget to give this video a thumb up and subscribe to our channel to help us obtain more subscribers and weekly stuff like this. Thanks for watching and until the next video guys, this is Rachel, signing out.